fight Time to see what life takes me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, how was shy I got real power Hebrew is a lie Gratification from the brothers, man All day Call her up Huh? Now, what did you learn, brother? What did you learn, sister? Where y'all been all our lives? Basically, what I want to ask. Yeah. Oh, they got turned out. Where y'all been? Right. Y'all was, was hot. Yeah. <laughs> now we've been out here on the streets, man. <laughs> you know, it's just our people, they don't they don't like to gravitate towards the truth. Our people don't, uh, they like to be enabled all right, with lies and vanity and deceit. When we come out here, we, we, we show true love. And what is that true love by telling our people the truth right. according to the Bible? Right. And we're going to show you the truth. Go to Baruch chapter 1 and verse 17. Go to Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 2. Right. The truth is we departed from our God and the Lord, he confounded us as a nation, man. We used to be kings like princesses, right? We used to have all dominion, sovereignty, rulership, peace, our own land, our government, our currency, an army. We had all of these things and now look at us in America. The Lord utterly confounded our nation because we didn't decide to do what he wanted to do. Now our leaders are our followers and like you said, our women have to step into that leadership role. And things are just flip flop backwards. Read what you got. Chapter 1 and verse 17. Read what you got. 65 2. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 2. Bring it out. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Been there all day. But the Lord called our nation a rebellious people. Right. right. Which walketh in a way that was not good. Which does what? Which walketh in a way that, that was not good. good. Which walk, what's going on, sister? No, you good, you good. And I got you, I got you. But our people, they walk in a way which is not good. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they don't have any knowledge on how to do that. Right. You know what? After their own thoughts. After their what? After, After their, their own, own thoughts. thoughts. See, the thing is, when it comes to God, and a lot of people miss this concept, it's very simple. When you submit to a higher power, you have to submit to a higher power. Y'all hear me? Don't let, don't let, see that's our people that walk in a way that's not good. That's the perfect example the Lord has had them right back. Right? But when we submit to a higher power, you have to submit what you want to do for your God. But our people like to walk after their own thoughts. They like to do what they want to do all the time. And they don't, go to Proverbs 16 to 25. They don't understand those things lead to death. See, like every other nation of people, they have their own moral code, their own moral structure. It's just when they come to America, they decide to freak off. Our people, what is our moral structure? What is our moral code? What is the laws that we abide by to submit ourselves so we don't do certain things? Read this, King. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 25. That's what yeah. God said. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. What the Lord say? There, there is, is a way, way that seemeth right, right unto a man. man. Yeah, you got up, you try to go to the grocery store, next to you know you get hit by a car, man. There's a way that seems right to a man, but read on. But the end thereof. What the Lord say? But, but the, the end thereof. So to that action, read on. Are the ways of death. Are the what? Are, are the, the ways, ways of death. death. The Lord is telling you in black and white text, he's telling you plain as day, stop doing what you want to do. Listen to me and you can have everlasting life. Just walk in a straight and narrow path. But our people in America, they are told you can do anything you want to do, and you can be anything you want to be. But damn, why do you think the, the, the mortality rate goes up and the life expectancy goes down? Because people want to do what they want to do. They walk in a way that's not good. Go back to Baruch 1 to 17. Read on. Uh, verse 3. The people that provoketh me to anger continually to my... Doing? What do we do to God? Provoketh me... Salakia. Provoketh me to anger continually right. to my face. So... Our people like to go to church. Our people like to say they serve God. You know, Granny, she's been in a, a Christian church for 30 years. But all 30 years, all she's been doing is provoking God to anger continually to his face, man. Because right. you're not serving him the correct way. At all. Every single day you wake up, you're making the most high mad. So we have to come out here to correct our people and let them know what they're doing wrong. Right. Right, read on. That sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Which remain, which remain among the graves. What do our people do? Which, which remain, remain among, among the, the graves. graves. Our people remain among the graves. Literally. I mean, our people, somebody gonna get shot tonight. And then somebody gonna go to the grave the next morning. I mean, our people remain among, who can this be talking about, man? Who is this Bible talking about? How is this book for everybody? Right. No, not everybody remains among the graves, man. 
Go to Baruch 1 and 17. So this is the problem with our people. And the Lord's going to tell you in black and white. Read this. The book of Baruch, chapter 1 and verse 17. Get out. Get out. For we have sinned before the Lord. We have did what? We, we have, have sinned, sinned before, before the Lord. Lord. Ask y'all a question. What is sin? What do you think sin is? We did it before the Lord. That's why we in this position. So we got to know what it is. Something that he doesn't approve of. Or what you say? It's okay, no wrong answer. You know you shouldn't be doing. Right? So go to Go to the book of First John chapter 4, verse 3. So the Bible has a biblical definition of sin. So think about uh, a law in America. Let's say you break that law. What do you receive? What, what, what's imputed against you? They have a list of what? Charges. Of, yeah. You get jail time, but they're going to say you did this charge. You got racketeering. You got first degree this, fourth degree that, third degree. We're going to add on three more charges just because, let me see. Oh, yeah, Tyrone, you're black. So you got four more charges just because of that. So those are charges. Sin is like a charge against God. So when God has laws and you break those laws, that's called sin or what? Or a charge. Read 1 John 4 and 3. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 3. Bring it out. And every spirit that confesseth not. No, 1 John 3 and 4, it's locked in. 3 and 4. 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committeth sin. Who committeth sin. Transgresseth also the law, right? For sin is the transgression of the law. So God has certain laws put up for his greatest people on the earth. And if they break those laws, they are imputed to sin. Sin is the wage of death. So when you sin, you receive death as a punishment. So for us, we have to say, okay, if sin is breaking God's laws, and we have, read Baruch 1 and 17 again? The book of Baruch chapter 1 and verse 17. Bring it out. Where we have sinned before the Lord. So now what does that mean? That means we have broken God's laws before the Lord. Right. Read on. And disobeyed him. And did what? And, and disobeyed, disobeyed him. him. And have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our God. Right. To walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Right. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt. So since we came out of Egypt, we haven't did not one commandment the Lord asked us to do. That's like you, you, you got children. You got children. Let's say you had children. Bro, right, your mother, your father asked you to do something continually. And you always said, okay, I'm going to do it. And you just never did it. Wash the dishes. I'm going to do it tonight when I get back from work. You never did it. Right? I'm going to do it in the morning. You never did it. You never took out the trash. Now, there's going to start to be what? Consequences for that. Certain punishments are going to start to arise from that. You're not just going to keep doing what you want to do. Read on. Until this present day. Until this what? Until, until this present, present day. How long we been sitting? Until, until this, this present, present day. day. Until this present day, we going off. Right. That's why we got to come out here. Right, read on. We have been disobedient. We have been what? We, we have, have been, been disobedient, disobedient. Read on. unto the Lord our God. Right. And we have been negligent and not hearing his voice. See that? Wherefore the evils what? cleave. What? Wherefore, Wherefore the, the evils, evils cleave. cleave unto us. Now I have, a, I have a question. Do you think evils cleave to black people? Just think about what happened about two weeks ago. There was a certain sister and a certain police officer and he was in her house. What happened? Evil happened. Right. Right? What about Trayvon Martin? Wasn't that evil? Right? What about George Floyd? Right. Wasn't that evil? Mike Brown. Right. Sandra Bland. Right. The evils literally cleave to our people. What happened to Tulsa, Oklahoma back in the 1920s? Didn't they drop a bomb on that whole city? Right. Right? What about Roseville, Florida? Didn't they destroy that? Black Wall Street? Right. After you were free from slavery, didn't they add an extra 100 more years of oppression? Literally. So the Lord said the evils cleave to our people. Why? Because we broke his commandments. Read on. And the curse. And the what? And the curse. Do you think our people are cursed? Our people aren't cursed. Even the cities that we live in, the food that we eat. Well, that's cursed, but I won't say people are cursed. We just cursed Okay. What about you, brother? All right. Go to verse 16. Go to verse 15. So. God actually did place generational curses on his people. Right. And when we go through these generational curses, we can easily see who it fits today and who this Bible was actually written to. So if we're cursed, the Lord said, what was read it? Deuteronomy 20 15. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Yes, it but it shall come to pass. It's gonna happen. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do his all his commandments 
and his statutes, which I commend thee this day, that all these curses. All these what? That no, all, all these, these curses. curses. Hold on, let's get some context. Who, who is talking right here? It's Moses. Moses is talking to the children of Israel after they were freed from Egypt. So all these curses, if you break this covenant that God has set up with you and your fathers, then the descendants of you and your children will be cursed. Right. And we're going to see what descendants are cursed. Read on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Read on. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. What the Lord say? Cursed, cursed shalt thou be, be in, in the city. city. I have a question. What group of people would you say is cursed in every city in America? In every city in America, if you want to go to the worst places, you, you're going to find these people, right? Certain people are scared to go to these places. Who, what, what nation of people would you say? Now, you have, you have East Indians, you got so-called white people, you got Chinese people, you got Japanese people, you got uh, Arabs. Who would you say is cursed in the cities? What nation of people? Oh, you also got black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. Who would you say fits that verse right there? Who would you say? You sure? I mean, I've been to a lot of cities and I've yet to see as a nation. Huh? No, I got you. I got you. But, but you have brothers that have. In every major city, you have the same group of people, the same demographic living in the worst places. What about you, brother? What would you say? Who would you say? What nation? Chinese people. They live in the worst places. Chinatown. I've been to Chinatown in New York, I've been to Chinatown. Why is there Chinatown everywhere and they always got prospering businesses? Right. Everywhere. Bring that out. You ever been to Chicago? They got Ukrainian village. They got Greek town. Right. Little Italy. Right. They got all Spanish. They got all types of towns. Right. Now what happens when you go to the south side? What happens when you go to 63rd in Old Block? Right. What's over there? Is it businesses over there? Uh. Or is it a lot of shooting? Who's over there though? It's black people, right? So who would you say is cursed? So it get deeper than that. Hold on, it get deeper than that. Read on. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And what? And cursed shall thou be in the field. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What time period was these people cursed in the field? What people can y'all think of that was in the field for long hours? What is June teeth about? From where? Where were you at before? In the field. That's where you gain independence from, right? So called. So this, you still it's in a it's in a different format. You you ain't lying. But the Lord said you're literally gonna be cursed in the cities and in the field, meaning you ain't gonna escape. But you know what's crazy? It gets very it gets deeper than that. Go to verse 54. That's just the start. That's just there's 43 curses in this Bible on God's people, and we only gonna read three to y'all. And I'm gonna ask y'all some more questions. Read this. Verse 54. We know. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. The man that you used to show brotherly love to. Read on. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. What's Crips and Bloods? His, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. What's Genies and BDs? His, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. I'm from that block, you from this block. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Read on. And toward the wife of his bosom. What's domestic violence? And toward the wife of his bosom. Let's F my baby mama. And toward the wife of his bosom. Read on. And toward the remnant of his children. Now hold on. Who is that talking about? Is that talking about Japanese people? Who is these are the Israelites, remember? This is these are the Hebrews, God's people. Who would you say out of all the people does he fit that curse? Does he fit that? Did you have your father in your household? You know he did, man. Right? You know he got a wife and he's not having an evil eye towards her, and you know, he he's good with his brother Jim across the street. You know, they're good neighbors, they've been neighbors for 30 years. But what about our people? Do we fit that curse? Having an evil eye towards your own brother that looked just like you. F that nigga. I ain't talking to him. He made a song about me. F that hoe. Right. All of that, man. Right? I don't care about my wife, man. She could have the kids. Right? Now I have a question. Who's known for growing up, not growing up without their father? Toby 1 and 8. Who's known for not having a father in the household? I'm asking you. It's us, right? Would you say it's us? Mm. Did you know there are men in the Bible with their own book that goes through these same things? Did you know that was a cursed document in the Bible? Read on. And toward the remnant of his children. Of, the, of his remnant of his children, which he shall what? Which he shall leave. No, he's going to stay and raise his kids. Which, which he shall leave. leave. No, he's gonna, no, his father's going to be there. Which, which he shall leave. leave. Which he shall leave. I have a question. The guy in the nice hat. Was you raised by your father? Do you have kids? I just seen a notification. Okay. Right? But the Lord said, our people, they always going to be known for leaving their children, man. Right? 
Read this. Now, this is a man named Tobit. He has his own book in the Bible. Let's see how he grew up. Read this. It's Tobit chapter 1 and verse 8. Bring it up. And the third I gave unto them to whom it was me. Listen to this. As the boar of my father's mother. As who? As the boar of my father's mother. What? Had commanded me right. because I was left an orphan by my father. I was what? I was left an orphan by my father. This man has his own book in the Bible. He's just like me and you. He's an Israelite. Read on. Furthermore, when I was come to the age of a man, right. so this man was raised by his father's mother. Who's known for raised, being raised by their grandmother, man? Love my grandmother. She was always there with me, man. Hey, I got my grandmother on my chain, man. There's brothers that has not been raised by their father. That's in the Bible. It gets deeper than that. Go to verse 68. It gets very deep. Read verse 68. These are curses, generational curses that will always be on God's people. Right. You know the time of Tobit? That was 2,500 years ago. He was still being raised by his father's mother, man. And guess what? 2,500 years later, you see the same people going through the same thing over and over again. So when we go in this Bible, we have to understand how, what is our downfall and how we can actually get out of that. Because the Lord actually documents the solution in the Bible on how we can come together. It's not no justice, no peace. It's not marching up and down. It's not coming together at cookouts and inviting everybody to the damn cookout. It's not these damn things that we that we doing. We're going to show you the solution after this. Read this. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now, what were the Israelites doing in ancient Egypt? Do y'all know? How did the pyramid get there? Somebody had to build it, right? Now, at the end of that building of the pyramid, they went to Pharaoh and they had their hands out like this. They said, all right, we're waiting for our direct deposit in our check. Did they get one? They didn't get one, right? So if, if you're building something, you don't get paid and you have to do it every day. What is that called? That's slavery. That is slavery. Go to Judah chapter 14 and verse 18. That is called slavery. So if you were in ancient Egypt and the Lord said, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt again, what does that mean? I'm going to bring you back into what again? Slavery again. Read this. Judah chapter 14 and verse 18. Here we go. These slaves, these what? These, these slaves, slaves right? have dealt treacherously. Right? One woman of the Hebrew. One what? One woman of the Hebrew. These other nations look at you as slaves. It's in the Bible. He said these slaves. So the Lord said, I'm going to bring you back into slavery again. Right? Read this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Slavery again. With ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. The transatlantic slave with trade. Ships. The Lord said we're gonna go into slavery again with ships. I right. know about the transatlantic slave trade. From from then west coast of Africa, all the way to America, or to Virginia, into all of these so-called 13 colonies where men and women from Africa was forcibly taken into boats on ships. You ever seen the movie Roots? Yep. Django. All, so y'all know about the transatlantic slave trade that happened to our people. What nation of people ever went into slavery on slave ships? Who is God talking to? He's talking to everybody that's on this sign. Right. The 12 tribes of the children, of, and not niggas, not black people, right. not thots, right. not hoes, right. not whores, right. not thugs, right. not bitches, right. not hood niggas, none of these words. Right. He's talking to the Israelites, the, the Hebrews. Right. This is your God. This is your history found in the Holy Bible. Y'all right. right. have to understand this. This can't be talking about everybody. Now, God is listening. Now, this is listen to the curses against our people to this very day. Now, I'm going to ask you a very important question. How do we uplift these curses? How do we uplift these curses? What do we do? Okay. Practice the word. Learn a little bit more. But there's a certain act. Now, we broke God's commandments and broke his laws. What do you, and, and this in America, for you not to go back to jail, what do you have to do? What is asked you, right? Don't break America's laws again, right? And you won't go back to jail, right? So if we broke God's laws and we got put into slavery and all these curses happened, what, do we, what shouldn't we do? Break the laws, right? right. We got to keep God's laws. Right. We have to have a, a moral structure, right? We have, go to First Timothy one and nine. We have to have laws. Do y'all know some of God's laws? Because how do you know a law you're breaking if you don't know His laws? That's the question we gotta have. Read, read that. 
first Timothy chapter one and verse nine, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So these laws weren't made for righteous men because if you are righteous, you already been keeping the law. But let's see what, how God's laws were set up. Read on. But for the lawless. But for the what? But, but for, for the, the lawless. lawless. Are black people? But, but for, for the, the lawless. lawless. We're a lawless nation. Read on. And disobedient. And what? And, and disobedient. Did we read in Baruch that we are disobedient children? Because remember, he's our God, our heavenly father. Hallowed be thy name. He's our father. Right. But we're disobedient children. Read on. For the ungodly. For the what? For, for the, the ungodly. ungodly. Read on. And for sinners. And for what? And, and for, for sinners. sinners. Then we read that sin is transgressing God's laws. And are we breaking God's laws every day? Read on. For unholy right. and profane. Right. For murderers of fathers. What did the Lord say? For murderers of fathers. What's gang banging? For murderers of fathers. Don't our men murder for other fathers of our men? Read on. And murderers of mothers. And what? And, and murderers, murderers of, of mothers. mothers. That's our people. Read on. For manslayers. Right. For whoremongers. For what? For whoremongers. Are our people whoremongers? Don't men sleep from women to women and not uh, and not uh, have them be their wife and women doing the same thing? Read on. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Right. For men stealers. For what? For men stealers. Don't our men and women sex traffic each other? Read on. For liars. For what? For liars. Don't our men lie every damn day for no reason? Read on. For perjured persons. Right. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to... Hey! Keep it down. They learn in the history. Now the Lord said these are for the lawless. All people are lawless. So now we have to learn some laws. Right. To get our nation right. Are y'all ready? Go to Deuteronomy 14 and verse 8. We got to know this. This is why we went into slavery. Now we know the reason why. Right. They've been looking for hundreds of years on why black people can just never get on top. But you you understand, your curse is on you from a divine entity that you're not going to break until you do what he says. Right. And it ain't going to change until you do what he says. Right. You can walk up a thousand times you know, up and down the street marching, but it's still going to happen to you. So we're going to learn some laws so we can reverse these curses. Read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 8. Right? No. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. What is swine? Don't know what that is? He says what? Pork. What is that? He said pork. Right? Read on. And the swine, because it divided the hoof, yet choose not to cut. It is unclean unto you. What is pig? It is unclean unto you. I like that. It is unclean unto you. Can't wait till Thanksgiving. It is unclean unto you. The Lord said, pig is unclean. You can't eat it. Can we? Do y'all eat pork? Okay, I'll praise to the most high. Don't ever touch it if y'all have. If y'all have in the past, repent and never do it again. Right. Right? It gets deeper than that. Read on. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. All right, do y'all like fish? What about you, eat fish? We like fish too. But you can't eat everything that come out the, the great blue sea, man. I don't care what these nations tell you. Yeah, you can eat everything you want. Just eat it. Just eat it. No, you can't just eat it. So we're going to see certain guidelines that set up on what you can eat that come, in the that's come out the waters, right? Read on. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Right. All that have fins and, and scales shall ye eat. Nah. Right. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat. You may what? Ye may not eat. I like shrimp. Ye may not eat. I love crab. Ye may not eat. I like lobster. Ye may not eat. Scallops. Ye may not eat. Crawfish. Ye may not eat. Wanna try oysters? Ye may not eat. Right? Can't eat any of those things. If y'all were eating them, let it alone. Leave it alone. Right, all those things that I mentioned, shrimp, crab, lobster, the bottom feeders, why do you think everybody or ocean around or in America is polluted? Because the natural cleansing system that our fathers set up, our enemies say, ah, no, nah, these black people, they, they're gonna eat these things, right? And they're gonna sin against their God so we can have some more fun in America. And that's what we do. Right now, you have a so-called black woman and black man right now eating lobster with the little, with the little bib. And a lemon juice flying everywhere. And they say, mm, mm, you, you like that? You eat that? That's what they doing right now. 60, 70, 80 dollars. Right? It's crap. It's a crap. Owned by a so called white man, he's rubbing his hands together like this. Yeah, look at these Hebrews sinning. The Lord said, You can't do that. So if you was eating that, brother, let it go. You only can eat fish that has fins and scales. Right? Like, uh, uh, what's some fish that got fins and scales? Tuna. Tuna. He loves that tuna. Snapper. Right? Red snapper. <laughs> tilapia. Bass. Cod. Whitefish. Steelhead. <laughs> yeah, you, they say it's man made. Yeah, don't touch that. All right, all right. So, yeah. All right, but you have other fish that got fins and scales. So, guess what? Those are the fish that you can't eat. Do you understand that, brother? 
You understand that, sister? It's also good if you even if you don't eat it, you gotta teach it to somebody else that may eat that. Right? Let's get some more. Go to Leviticus 19 and verse 28. Right? Go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it out, bring it out. Read this. Leviticus chapter 19. It's for you, brother. Hope you're paying attention. Read on. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Yo. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Right. Let's start verse 26. Verse 26. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall you use enchantment, nor observe time. Right, so enchantments and observing times, obviously we don't eat things with the blood. That's not in our nature, right? We're not beasts, we're not cavemen, right. like some other races, right? right? But we're, we're a holy nation, so we like to cook our food, right? And season it, right? right? We don't like blood running out. Bro. Yeah, yeah, that's off, don't do that. The, the animal's still alive at that point, ready to jump off your plate, right? But the Lord said we can't use enchantments nor observe times. Y'all know what that means? What does it mean to use enchantments in reserve times? It's called star worship. Yeah, star worship, right, astronomy, right, what's your sign? I'm a Scorpio. Oh, you're a Gemini, I can't talk to you. I know your type, right? And they start running down a whole list of charges against you, they didn't even know your first name. Yeah, you like this, that, and the third. I know you, I can look in your eyes. That's evil, that's witchcraft. Right. Even in the world, bro brothers ain't get down with that, man. Somebody asked me what's my sign, I said dollar sign. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, what the hell are you talking about? Don't ain't right. dealing with that, man. Right? But now we know the truth. Hey, now we Israelites. I'm an Israelite. I don't deal with that, man. Right. I don't deal with astrology. I, I, I'm not dealing with astrology. I serve the God that created heaven and earth. Right. right. I don't serve these. Go to Deuteronomy 10 and 14. We don't serve these stars Bring and these out. idols. So if you were doing that, you know, your birth, so called birthday come around and, you know, your girl, your friend hits you up. Yeah, it's German. No, we're not dealing with it. Block that number immediately. Right. They come with spirits. You know, you know some sisters like that. I know you know some people like that too, brother. So I read this, King. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 13. Yeah. Verse 14. Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens is the Lord thy God. It's the what? It's the Lord thy God. You know what? The earth also with all that is therein. So the heaven and the heavens of heavens and the earth and everything therein belongs to the most high. So why would I serve some stars and look on my phone and before I would pray in the morning, I look at my horoscope and I'm scrolling. My thumb starts to bleed because I'm just scrolling. Can I eat today? It says, no, you're not going to eat today. You're going to starve. And you believe it. You got some people that's bugged out their mind. But we're not doing that, right? We're not going we're not going to do that no more if we watch. We Israelites. We're Hebrews, God's people, right? Right. All right, come on. Read on. Come. Huh. Verse 28. So like verse 27. Ye shall not eat, uh, you shall not round the corners of your heads. Right. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. So, brother, we can't shave our beards off. We can't just shave off our beards. Why is that? Go to somebody got the Bible dictionary. Somebody can go to Bible Dictionary real quick. So it's a custom of our people as the Hebrews. Why? Because we're men. We're grown men. Why did they have us shave our beards during the Drimco era? What were they trying to do to you? They were trying to, what were they trying to do to you, brother? Why did they have you shave your beards and have you walk on the street? Why? They were trying to emasculate you, brother. Right. You're not a man. You're not like me, boy. Right, and they'll shave off your beard. You gotta look down like this. You gotta have your hands like this. You gotta be hunched over, and, and you can't say nothing to the so-called white man. Right. And he still sprayed you with some hose, man. Right, but the Lord said we gotta have a beard on our face because that's a badge of manly honor. Right. Like a lion. What's a lion without his mane, man? He gonna look like his wife. He gonna be effeminate. Right, right? his roar gonna start sounding like a damn uh, a meow. <laughs> yeah, he gonna, he's gonna go, what the lion gonna get saucy. Sassy. Sassy. That's, that's, that's off. Read this, King. The definition for beard, a badge of manly dignity. What does the, the Lord say? A badge, a badge of manly, badge of manly dignity. dignity. So the Bible dictionary says a badge of manly dignity. Read on. Huh. As a sign of mourning, it was the custom to pluck it out or cut it off. Right. The Israelites were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beard. We're forbidden as a Hebrew to shave off the corners of our beard. Right. Why do you think every Gillette and Razor commercial got you in it? Right. Really? Snoop Dogg. I think he was in that commercial. Doing all these damn commercials, man. He's damn shaving off his beard and he's throwing the water on your face and you look in the mirror like this. You call We're not doing that. That's right, not our right. custom. Leave that to the so-called white man. Right, right. Yeah, he wiping it off with the damn hot rag and all of that, man. No, that's evil. The Lord said we can't be shaving off our beard, brother. So for God, I mean, like, so you can line it up, you know what I'm saying? If you need to, you know, trim it down, you know, but you can't shave it all. You can't go into your beard line. Right. So, brother, you won't stop shaving for God, shaving it all the way off. All praise to the most high. We be trying to get a new job. 
And he says, I'm going to pay you $520,000 a year right now. Sign the contract. And he look in your eye. He said, you want to shave your beard, boy. Wicked. What you going to do? Uh, what you going to do? You going to start thinking about it? You going to say, I got to go to the bathroom? What you going to do? You going to deny it, right? You going to walk down them stairs. You going to do this. What the hell are you talking to, man? I adore that, man. For, for God, brother. All praise to y'all about Shimmy. I'm shocked. All right? Read on from what you got, Leviticus. Verse 28, right? Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, right? Nor print any marks upon you, right? I am the Lord. What does it mean, print marks upon you? What does that mean? Well, you're cutting yourself, right? We don't do that, you know, you get cyber bullied and you know, these white people, they start dying in bathtubs. We don't, we're not, that's not our spirit. You know what I'm saying? We stronger than that, right? But what does it mean to print marks upon you? What is this? What is that right there? It's tattoos. So the Lord said we can't get tattoos. But obviously we was in y'all shoes at one point in time. Right? Did brothers ever get any tattoos ever again? Nah. -uh. -uh, no. That means that was grace and mercy from our God. So if y'all have tattoos, we just can't get it again. For our God. Does that make sense? No more tattoos according to the Bible. Because our God said the Hebrews, these people, the greatest people on the earth, we can't do that. You understand? All right, go to First Corinthians 3. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter three and verse sixteen. Yeah. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Right. Our bodies are the temple. You know. What? If any man defile the temple of God, what the Lord say. If any man defile, defile the, the temple, temple of God. God. So another word for defile means to pollute. If any man pollute God's, what are some ways to pollute God's to pollute your temple? Huh? What are some ways to pollute your temple? Okay. Okay, 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 I can get down with that. Right, yeah, like, you know, what's going into your mind, what you watch, what you right. eat, right? Eating unclean foods like we brought out. Right. Right, what about drugs? What about smoking? Do y'all smoke? I do. You do? You smoke? Now, it's under, because we used to smoke, right? Brothers used to smoke a lot. More some than others, man. See, look at this brother. Hey, Chip. <laughs> See that? But brother, stop, man. You know, but brother smoke for different things, you know, like, you know, anxiety and depression and all of that. But we just, we put that down. Why? Because we, we read this verse that we're about to read to you and it scared the hell out of us. Because we can't go to Hebrews 10 and 31. We don't, we don't like to play with the living God. Because everybody, you know, you know, Jay, like, I caught a body. Blah, blah. Every grave on the earth, every burial site belongs to God. He's the one that cuts you down. Right? Read this. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. What the Lord say? Him, him shall, shall God, God destroy. destroy. Talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Him, him shall, shall God, God destroy. destroy. So God said, if you decide to pollute your temple from this day after, after I just warned you through the servants and prophets, guess what? I'm going I'm to cut you down. I'm going to destroy you. Right? That's why you see people with them things in their neck, man. Right, yeah, they, oh, no, no. right, and they be all jammed up in the hospital. I want food, and the nurse can't. Does this person want food? They just leave them there and they die, right? Because they can't speak, man. So the Lord said, "You can't do that. We're gonna jam you up." Read this in Hebrews ten and thirty-one. Hebrews chapter ten and verse thirty-one. Bring it out. It is a fearful thing. It is a what? It, it is, is a, a fearful, fearful thing, thing to, what? to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful. Once you in God's hands, ain't nothing you gonna do about it. You see Jake and God, they be playing around, they be killing their brother, next thing you know they in front of that judge. And 420 years is on the line. And, and next thing you know, the, the whole jury, they all white. And he says, we condemn him guilty. And he fall out of his chair, man. That's play, you playing with the living God, man. Yeah, that's, you playing with the Lord, man. The Lord will cut you down any type of way, man. You know, so if, if y'all was smoking, you know, weed or cigarettes or vapes or whatever y'all gotta take a step this day forward to stop right are y'all gonna take a step forward to stop doing those things for god as hebrews knowing our people went into slavery and suffered hundreds and thousands of years of atrocities of curses y'all can make a difference right now are you gonna say yeah you gonna, hey let's take steps okay okay that's honest but are you gonna actually try don't don't start throwing up the basketball she got throwing up the ball. No, you gotta say no. I'm gonna stop. What about you, brother? That if it's, I don't want to lie. Work in progress. 
What the Lord said, I'm going to I'm 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 attempt to wake you up tomorrow. Right. You know, I already know I got all these people I look after, you know. I try. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He start, he start right. The Lord start talking to the angel. He start checking his phone. He say, yeah, I'm a, anyway. No, nah, you don't want the Lord to play with you like that, right? Don't play with the Lord like that. We, yeah, don't play with the Lord like that. If you're going to try, you better you better really try. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you got to you gotta walk outside, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you got to do, like you said, basketball, whatever. Right, but we got we to gotta really try. Because if not, read this. So I write chapter 5 and verse 7 in the GNT. Come on. Oh, put this brightness up. You got it. Come on. So I write chapter 5 and verse 7 in the GNT. Come back to the Lord quickly. What the Lord say? Come back to the Lord quickly. Come back to the Lord quickly. Lord say, you better come back to quickly. You know what? Don't think that you can keep putting it off. Right. His anger can come upon you suddenly. Right. And you will die under his punishment. What the Lord say? And you will die under his punishment. The Lord don't warn you before you die. When's the last time somebody got a letter in the mail from from God Himself, right? Writing in, writing Michael the Archangel. This is to you. In about 13 days since you play with God, you're going to die. So, you know, just pack your stuff up. I don't know if you got a will ready, but you may want to get that going. You know, if you, you know what I'm saying, talk to a couple people, pack your bags. And you got a daughter out in Michigan, let her know too. They're, you're not getting a letter letting you know you're about to die. The Lord just take you out, man. Read on. Huh. Read on. Uh, Verse 8. Con, that's it on that. Right? So don't keep thinking you can play with the Lord. Y'all understand that? So if y'all going to make a progress... It's wise to say, you know, start making that progress. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 10. Right? Go to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Like, verse, uh, I hold that. 7 to 10. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 10. Bring it you out. understand? He's the, this is the God of the black Hispanics and Native Americans. Even on a physical level, some of us that did grow up with our fathers, they didn't play that, man. They didn't play that. You know, oh, what's that, what's that father of good times? I don't know if y'all ever watched him. He was nothing to be played with, man. Yeah, James wasn't playing. You know what I'm saying? Them kids was in line. This is the. This is your God. This is your father, man. He's not playing with you. He put you on slave ships. Two million of our people just died over here alone. Then added an extra hundred years of Jim Crow law after that, and it made you think you was free when you really not. These are the. These are the punishments of our God. Read this. It's the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 10. Bring it up. And he repaid them that hate him to their face. What does God do? And he repaid hey, them that hate, hate him to their face. face. The Lord said he repays them that hates him to his face. Right. The Lord don't sneak no. up on you. The Lord not the so-called white man shake your hand and make you sign a false contract, man. The Lord gonna come to you in your face and look at you nose to nose. Stop playing with me, dude. That's how the Lord play. That's how the Lord get out. Right. Read on. To destroy them. To what? To, to destroy them. Right. He will not be slack to him that hated them. He will repay him to his face. Yeah, the Lord don't take his time. He gonna, he gonna repay you that, that hate you to his face, man. So meditate on that whenever you want another cigarette, you want another blunt. He said, hold on, let me go to Deuteronomy 7 and verse 10. Go to Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. Let me go to 1 Corinthians 3 and 16 because you understand these words actually heal you. If these words are in your mind, these words heal you. So when you say I'm a work in progress, replace that cigarette or that blunt or whatever, or them, whatever you're doing, replace it with this and trust in this and the Lord's gonna make all those things go away. I told you, like some, we, some, mo some of us, most of us, we used to do hardcore drugs, man. Right. All types of things that we thought can never escape from, man. Right. But the Lord loosened those bands of affliction. And he freed us from those things, because what's going to happen is you start to become a slave to yourself, and you don't want to do that. Right? Read this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter sixteen and verse twelve. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster. It was neither what? It was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. So herb doesn't restore you to health. Read on. But thy word. But the what? But, but thy word. word. The what? But, but thy word. word. Read on. Oh Lord, which healeth all things. Which does what? Which, which healeth, healeth all, all things. things. So if you have anxiety, you got PTSD, you going through you know different things in your life that you you know depression. The Lord, the words of the Lord actually heal you because right. the Lord has documented accounts of all of our forefathers and foremothers through history that actually went through the same things, that actually went through the same atrocities, even worse than you. And the word of God actually healed them. You understand that? So we can't be relying on certain things when the Lord says his word heals all things. I understand? All right. Our praises. Now read this. Deuteronomy 22. Now this is for you, sister. I think the brother brought it up, but read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You know what abomination means? Utterly detestable. What if you've seen a rat right now crawl up your leg? Oh. Ooh. You'll kick it? How would you feel? 
how many showers would you take? And it, 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 it came right from the sewer, hopped in the garbage can, came out with an apple, and it ran up your leg. That's how God feels, that's an abomination to you, right? That's an abomination, that's how God feels about a man in a dress. God says, ooh, man, slay that man, kill him. Right. Oh, I, I, the Lord is, you know what I'm saying, it's an abomination, right? The Lord feels the same way about a woman wearing man's attire. Right. It's an abomination. It is pisses God off. What is men's attire that woman can't wear? Think about the 17, 15, 14, and 1300s. You have a, this woman and her husband, they're ruling a nation. Her husband comes out in fine apparel, gold, blue, white, silk. He has a crown on his head. This woman has a tiara on her head, right? You look at her apparel, she has some leggings on. That don't even add up, do it. What is, she had the leggings on the crop top and then she switches to some pants. What does she have on? Remember, she's a princess. She's a she's a ruler. What is what is, what does she have on? What do you what would you imagine this woman had on? Brother, what would you think she had on? She's a princess. They even put it in movies. What does she have on? She, no, no, she ain't had no pants on. Remember, she's a ruling princess. A dress. She has a. I mean, you not. Why? All right. If these women, they love having weddings, right? Why don't they ever show up to a wedding in a, in a, in a pants, a pair of pants? They don't do it on purpose. Why? Because that's their day to feel beautiful, right? To feel great. Right? But this woman, on her wedding day, why does she ever wear pants? If she's comfortable in it, she wears a dress for a reason. Princess, uh, T Princess Tiana, Cinderella, they even put in your movies, man, that these women, they wear dresses. Why is that? Because they know who they are. If our women really knew who they were, do you think they would have pants on them? Even in the slave fields, our great, great grandmothers, they always knew that they were Hebrews. Dressed up in a dress, they pick a cotton all day. Even the most, uh, some of the most athletic women got skirts on, man. Serena Williams, Venus Williams. Man. Right. They're not out there in pants and leggings, man. So our women, they have to put on dresses for God as a princess. Read this. The book of Judah, chapter 12 and verse 15. So she arose and decked herself with her apparel. And did what? And decked herself with her apparel. And all her woman's attire. And all her what? And all her woman's attire. Right. And her maid went and laid soft skins on the ground for her. This is Judith. This is this is a very, very, very mighty woman in the Bible, man. She cut off the captain of the uh, captain of Holof, uh, Captain Hollow Furnace, right? Of the Assyrian host, man. This is Judith. This is our women, man. Go to Judith 11 and 21. Let's read a little bit more about this woman, man. These are our foremothers in the Bible that didn't play around. Read this. Huh. Judah chapter 11 and verse 20. Then her words please Holofernus. Holofernus is the captain. Read on. And all his servants. And all his what? And all his servants. Read on. And they marveled at her wisdom. All right. And said, there is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other. All right. Both for beauty of face. But for what? Both for beauty of face. That's the most beautiful woman in the earth, man. Even this dirty Assyrian captain knew that, man. Read on. And wisdom of words. So sh this is Judith. And she was dressed in a dress. Now, if she had some pants on, you think he would, she would, he would be saying that to her? He gonna treat her like uh, some of the other this, you know, whores around, man. But she had a dress on, man. And we can get into Esther. We can get to Martha. We can get to Mary. We can get to we can get to a lot of. We can get to Rebecca. Susanna. We don't even get started on Susanna, man. The wife of King King Jehoiakim, man. Right during the Babylonian, we can't. We didn't get, we don't even get into that, man. These are all of this. Susanna was cold, man. This is all of our women in the Bible. If you want to, we have to be like our women, or we be like our, our foremothers and forefathers. So if we need to do that, that means God said, as a start, read that verse again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You will never put on a dress, right? Hell no. You won't stop wearing pants, right? We're going to try it again. You will never put on a dress, right? You're not going to put on some more pants, right? Um, you going to wear some shorts? Yeah, I can't go to the court and shoot in no dress. Uh-uh. All right, how about, how about you? Breaking your neck. 
how about how about how, how about you wear a skirt with some leggings under? Like 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 uh, like I said, Serena Williams. So you can so you can try your best to keep the laws. God sees your sincerity. But if he's gonna say, well, yeah, hey, I'm gonna go play basketball, he's throwing some shorts as an excuse. And your eyes start getting big, and now you start buying ten thousand shorts, man. No, oh, the Lord sees that, man. What right. is Ezekiel eleven and five? The Lord sees your heart. He right. sees if you're sincere or not. So you can get so you can get a skirt, you know what I'm saying? A little longer skirt, put some leggings under, and you can go to the court and you know you start hooping these men out there, man. And they're gonna they gonna say, damn, beauty of face and wisdom of words, and thy athleticism on the court. You know? But read this. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter eleven and verse five. Right. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me right. and said unto me. Speak, thus saith the Lord. Right. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel. Right. For I know the things that come into your mind. What the Lord say? For I know the things that come into your mind. Every one of them. No, I, I missed something. Every one of them. That one slipped past me. Every one of them. The Lord knows every thought that comes into your mind. Every thought. You have, you have millions of thoughts per day, but you can only have one at a time. And the Lord records all those thoughts via the angels. So if you're going to be sincere about that, you're going to play basketball, then, you know, I would say take that counsel. Go to 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 11. Because there's counsel that can save your life, man. Right. And you need to understand that. So you have to have, but when you're not playing basketball, there's a lot of beautiful dresses. And we're not saying dress like the so-called Arab woman where you can only see your damn eyes, man. We're not, we're not saying that. You know, you can throw in a beautiful dress, right? And kind of sauce it up a little bit. Right. right read this. We got to be modest. Right. 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 11. Wherefore Nathan spoke unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, right. saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign? And David our Lord knoweth it not. Now therefore, come let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel. Give thee what? Give, give thee counsel. Give thee what? Give, give thee counsel. counsel. That thou mayest save thine own life right. and the life of thy son Solomon. So counsel can save your life. So I would say that would be a righteous thing, you know what I'm saying, to kind of to kind of throw that on if you want to do those things. But remember, you got to keep God's commandments. You understand that? Now, I kind of show this sister this, Aharon, Baba Kasha, other women in dresses. Just kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about. All right? I'm going to keep going. No, I sit on that. Now, brother, what did you learn? What's your true ethnicity to God? Are you really black? Are, you're black to God? Or are you really a Hebrew Israelite that he has chosen from the foundation of the earth? Which one is it? Are you a Hebrew? Or are you just a black guy? You're just a black guy. Some right. black dude. Some just black monkey thug. Is that you? No. So what are you? Yo, yo, what? Brother, can y'all hear him? Nah. What, what you say? Hebrew. You're a Hebrew, brother. That's right, brother. An Israelite. From which tribe? You Jamaican, you Haitian, you Puerto Rican, you American. Black, which one? Which one? You Colombian, which one? American black. Oh, you from the tribe of Judah? Oh, damn, he from the tribe of Judah. You know the, you know Christ came from that tribe, brother? Woo! The Lord came from that tribe. You know that? Go to do you ever heard Christ is black? Or he was dark skinned? Yeah, Christ looked just like you, brother. Go to Hebrew. Go to Hebrews. You already know, man. Why right? you gotta understand that? You understand that system? You see them dresses? You like some of them dresses? I told you, says you all since the beginning in there with we Hebrew women. You're Hebrew men and women, man. Got style, got song. Read this. Hebrews 7 and 14. Kanye, Hebrews 7 and 14, Shalak. Right? So we the Hebrews. We are Israelites, and these are our customs. This is our culture. This is our heritage that was given to us from the Most High by the hand of Moses, man. Right. And these are the things. You see, you see the rich heritage that we departed from just to be niggas and thugs and smoke blacks and chase Keisha and buy Hennessy bottles all day just to go to work the next morning and miss your rent still. We're not, we not dealing with that no more, man. Right? This is our culture, and these are the things that we have to keep. I say no, man. Say no. This is Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident. It is what? For it is evident. He says, obvious, read on. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. That our Lord where? That our, our Lord, Lord sprang, sprang out of Judah. Judah. Our Lord sprang out of Judah. So when the Christ was born, he had so-called, he just had so-called black skin. Right. He was born during the Roman Empire. Right. Don't you think the Roman Empire, they would have known if Christ was black or white? Don't you think King Herod would already knew if Christ was a so-called white man like him? Christ had no color. Yes, he did. I've never seen an invisible, invisible man walk around my entire life. He was born from Mary and Joseph, and he came from the tribe of Judah, brother. He lived in Nazareth. Nazareth was like the hood. In Galilee? Christ? Hey, go to, J go to uh, 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 Luke 1 and 45. 
Go to Luke Order 45. The Lord came out the hood just like us. That's how you know this is our book, and these are the customs that we have to keep as a people, man. Right. We once knew these things 2,000 years ago, but you know. We, the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 45. Bring it out. And blessed is, blessed is she that believe, right. for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced. What's the pre uh, he's an Israelite indeed. John 1 and 45. Stop. John, John. John 1 and 45. So I got the verse right here the book. John chapter 1 and verse 45. Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him. We have what? We, we have, have found him. him. We found the Messiah. We found him. We finally found him. We read the prophets. We read the Old Testament. We found the Messiah. Read on. Of whom the uh, of whom Moses and the law right. and the prophets did write, right. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of where? Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. You know the son of Joseph. Right. And Nathaniel said unto him, What do you say? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? What do you say? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Imagine somebody say, Yeah, we found a Messiah. We found a Messiah. He's on uh, uh he's on 63rd right now, Chief Key. That you what the hell? What do you mean came out of 63rd? You would think a, a nicer place. No, Christ was from the hood, man. That's how he knows that you go to Revelation chapter two and verse nine, man. Right? What's the, what's the hood over here in Milwaukee? So, yeah, 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 we found him. He's on the north side, right? Where you going, sister? Hey, I got. I can't stay out all night. I got you. You got a flyer? I do. All right. What's your ethnicity according to the Bible? One question: Are you black or are you an Israelite? Israelite. Israel, all praises. Call along, man. I got you, brother. All right, we the Israelites according to the Bible. Mighty edification out here on Brady Street, man. Come, clap it up, man. I'll pray to y'all by streaming y'all. Read on, King. Verse forty-seven. That's like reading on in verse forty-six. Philip said unto him, "Come and see." Right. Yahweh saw Nathaniel coming to him and said of him, "Behold, an Israelite indeed." Behold what? Behold, an Israelite indeed. These are people. Behold, an Israelite indeed. So we all here to wake up the black, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans to tell them, behold, you guys are Israelites and these, right. and we have to come back, and you got to prepare for your God. Read right. this. This is the book of Amos, chapter 4, verse 12. Bring it out. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, Lord, say, prepare, prepare to meet thy God, God. Say, prepare, prepare to meet thy God, God. again, prepare, prepare to meet thy God. God. Y'all oh, gotta come back and prepare to meet y'all God Cause in these last days judgment is gonna come upon the earth man. Oh praise and with that we say Come Yashua Come Yashua Come Yashua